Hey guys, my name is Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail. Welcome to our Chainmail tutorial channel. Hey there guys, big hi hello, how are you? Um, thanks for popping in and spending some time with me today. So today I'm going to be doing another weave demonstration for you. The weave I'll be demonstrating today is called Honey Bee. So let's jump straight into it. Okay guys, so here's some sample pieces of the Honey Bee Weave. Now the Honey Bee Weave might look familiar to some of you guys. It uses the um, Scary Weave units. They're just joined differently. So this is an easier joining than the Scary Weave does. I'll link to our Scary Weave. We've done this before as a video. I'll link this up here in the corner for you if you want to check that one out as well. So if you've done Scary Weave before, this will look very familiar to you. So I'm just going to go through the sizes quickly here. I'll also have them listed up here on the side for you. And they'll also be down in the description section below the video. But just going through them quickly, here is our 14 gauge AWG, so 1.6 millimeter diameter wire. And the ring ID here is eight millimeters. This one here is 16 gauge, 1.2 millimeter diameter wire, 5.75 millimeters was the ring I chose here. The one millimeter wire, the ring ID is 4.75 millimeters and the 0 0.8 millimeter diameter wire, four millimeter ID. Okay, so I'm going to be working in the 14 gauge rings today so that uh, you can see what I'm doing. So to start this weave up, we just wanna make a short chain of two two with your rings so if you go ahead and do that now put that together however it works best for you guys just go through and close this one up okay so just make up a short piece of chain like this Separate it out so you've got one ring on each side and two rings in the middle, just like I have here. And then taking up another opened ring, we're going to split these center rings a little bit. We're going to shift one to the left, one to the right. Okay, it doesn't matter which way you go. And we're going to take our open ring and we're going to slip it. So in this case, I'm going to go through the bottom ring first. And then I'm going to go through the top ring. So you can see that I've separated out those rings in the middle so that I'm only going through one of those rings at a time. Okay, I'm gonna close that up. Put it back into the starting position so it looks like this. So these units are a little loose until we start joining them together. So don't worry about that too much. Just make sure you keep them um, in shape. Then I'm going to flip my work over to the other side and I'm going to put a second ring through the other side, okay? Through the same positioning. Okay, just like that. And I will close that up. So you can see that that sort of slipped into a bit of a jumbled mess. So I'm going to very carefully pick all that up and make sure it all stays in pattern. Then I'm gonna put that one aside because we wanna have at least two of these made up so we can join them up. So again, just make up your starting chain. Final rings. All right, so there's our starting chain. We have that position, so it's one, two, one. We then grab another opened ring. I'm going to put it through the bottom ring here first. So I've separated out, so the bottom ring goes to the right, the top ring goes to the left. That bit doesn't matter. Whatever works easier for you guys, do it that way. I'm going to put this through the bottom ring first and only the bottom ring, okay? We don't want it to go through both those rings at the same time. 
we want to separate those rings out and go through one ring at a time. So through the bottom ring first and then bring it up and come through the top ring. Okay, close that ring up. Put it back into position so our work looks like this. Flip it over to the other side and place another large ring to mirror the one we just did. It's much easier this time because those center rings are separated out for us. And close that up. Okay. So I'll just do it once more. Create our starting chain. So if you wanted to incorporate a little bit of color into this weave, it's easily done in most of the gauges. The gauge that it, there wasn't a direct correlation for was the 1.2 millimeter wire, the 16 gauge. If you wanted to do a uh, color in the 14 gauge, you would use 5 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, for the um, 18 gauge version, the one millimeter wire, you would use 3 sixteenths of an inch. And for the 20 gauge, uh, 5 30 seconds of an inch will work. But as I said, there wasn't a direct correlation between our anodized rings and the 16 gauge rings there. Okay, so we've got our starting chain, our one, two, one. We're going to separate those center rings a little bit so that they sit off center to each other. I'm going to come down through the bottom ring first. I'm going to pick that bottom ring up and then I'm going to come up through the top ring. Okay, so that we're only going through those rings. We're going through both of those rings, but we go through them one at a time. Okay, and we close that up. We flip our work to the other side. You can see that our center rings are already separated because of the ring that we just put into position. So we just run another ring through those same rings just like that okay so now we're going to want to join our units together so before I do that I'm going to put some uh, rings here at the beginning so we join them by joining the rings that we just placed okay the center rings that we just placed these ones here and we're going to go through this space here on either side of our unit okay so I'm just going to place these rings at the beginning these will be the rings that you would attach your clasp or eventually attach your clasp to so you may want to put uh, some smaller rings on one side for your clasp attachment purposes but since I'm just showing you the weave right now I'm just going to use the same size ring so you can see I've just gone through those center rings just there okay so these are the two rings that i've just added and you can see i've just picked up those rings on either side that we added previously then to join these to the other units i'm going to do the same sort of thing i'm going to take up an open ring and you want to be paying attention to the way your center, these original center rings, the ones sticking up here, are sitting because we want those rings to maintain that same pattern all the way through, or at least that is how the original weave is done. So when you join your next one, you want to make sure that these rings here, these center rings that are showing their edges to you, are in the same pattern all the way through. So I'm just going to put my connecting rings through those flat facing center rings just there you can see I've just gone straight through there before I close this ring up I'm going to pick up another one of my units making sure that it's facing these rings here are facing the same way I'm just going to come in and pick up the same rings on that unit okay close it up and I'm going to double that ring up. OK, 
Okay, so just through the same path, pick up the ring. And you can see once you've got the connecting rings on both sides of your unit, your unit starts to stabilize a little bit more. As you can see this one over here, it's all loosey goosey. But once we connect it to the next unit, that will tighten up and the weave will hold its shape. So again, I'm going to take up a new ring. I'm going to go through the top and bottom center ring here that's laying flat, okay? So through the one at the top, through the one at the bottom. So you can see I've just picked up those two rings. And then I'm going to come over to my new unit. I'm going to make sure that unit is facing the same way. It's holding the same pattern as our previous. Once I'm sure of that, I'm going to go up through those two same rings. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to close that up. Okay, and then I'm going to double that connection point. And that's it guys, that is the honeybee weave. So as I said, it is a variant of the scary weave. Uh, the only difference is the way that the units are connected to each other. This is a slightly, well, this is a simpler connection than the scary weave. But uh, yeah, you just keep doing that until you reach the length that you require. And once you get to the end, obviously, you'll throw a couple of more rings in at the end to stabilize that side. So as I said, uh, if I was making a bracelet, I would make the end pair of rings smaller for the clasp attachment. Um, but that is totally your call. That's it, guys. That's how easy it is to do the honeybee weave. Alrighty guys, that's it. That is the video tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it and that you love this little weave. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Leave any comments or questions down below. Check out some of our other videos while you're here. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, maybe you might consider doing that for us. Um, last but not least guys, there's our link up here to our online store where we sell all the bits and bobs and you know what. Let's give that a little bit of love if you need some supplies. Alright guys, thanks again for popping in and uh, spending your day with me. Take care of yourself and I'll see you sometime in the very near future. Bye!